Hello everyone, you're all very, very welcome back uh, to the conference. Um, and welcome to the Minister also, I see who's uh, coming to the stage. We've so much to discuss this afternoon and clearly you had a lot to discuss over lunch because we're even starting uh, a couple of minutes late. Um, we've plenty for you um, this afternoon with uh, four more sessions to look forward to um, and in our fireside chat we'll be hearing from Minister Eamon Ryan, uh, TD Minister for the Environment, Climate and Communications who's just arrived. He'll be in conversation with Marguerite Sayers, Deputy CEO at ASB and I'm going to hand it over to uh, Michael Liebreich to uh, give them the tough questions. He's going to take that over. We'll also have um, our uh, Solving Net Zero by 2050 panel, as well as a keynote address from uh, ESB CEO Paddy Hayes. We're going to have that later on. But right now, we're going to experience a little blast from the past. And to tell you all about it, please give a warm welcome to Peter O'Shea, Head of Corporate and Regulatory Affairs at ESB, to introduce this little blast from the past. <laughs> So thank you very much, Durbla, um, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to bring you back to the year 1979. That's 40, 45 years back. Um, and what was then known as the Aer Lingus Young Scientist Competition. So sit back and enjoy this clipping from, from that competition. How are we planning to solve Ireland's on the farm problems? Industry and 
So, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't stop here. Can you put your hands together again and give a big welcome to our young scientist, Declan Horrigan, and his inspirational teacher, Sean O'Flynn. <laughs> Sean, Declan, you're more than welcome. Delighted to see you. Now, unfortunately, Paul Duggan couldn't make it uh, this afternoon, but we're delighted to have you here. So, Sean, um, you're, you were teaching in Blackpool, Blackpool Secondary School in Cork back then. Yeah. What was your inspiration behind this project? I had, <clears throat> I had two, two distinct aims. Uh, I was appointed to the school in 1977, and it was what would now be called a DESH school. It was a very, very disadvantaged area. We had no metal work room, we had no art room, we had no woodwork room, we had no music. It was just basically the three R's. It was actually not a proper secondary school, it was what was called a secondary top. We, we, we educated the boys up to what was then the intercert nowadays, it's called the junior cert. And the better, more intelligent ones then went on to another school to do their leaving cert. I was working there about two years and I became aware that what these children suffered from most was what Bordeaux, the French education, is called cultural capital. And I was very aware growing up, I was kind of a, a C student, middle of the road class. And these guys were really, really bright. They were A students. But what I had going for me was uh, experiences right from the time I was born that kept opening up my horizons to other things, you know, we'd go to restaurants, I'd be brought to plays, uh, my father was in, very interested in bird watching. My horizons were being opened all the time, and I was aware that these children, students, uh, didn't have that kind of advantage, despite the fact that genetically they were super, super intelligent guys. So that was one reason, I just wanted to lift them out of where they were in Blackpool and get them bring them to, Dug uh, to Dublin to enter the Air, uh, Air Lingus Young Scientist exhibition and to mix with other students from other schools. And then as the project developed, we went to different parts of the country. We went to Woodford where uh, Dudley Stewart had uh, the beginnings of a uh, wind generating capacity. And it amazed me, I had four of them in the car and myself, that. Um, they had never seen small towns. You know, we went up through Buttevant and Charleville and up through Mount Shannon and on a, on a way up to Woodford. They'd never, they'd never seen that before. So as the project went on, uh, I kept opening up new avenues for them. Declan reminded me on the way up on the train that I brought them into RT Studios in Cork and they did an uh, interview with the late Alf McCarthy who died uh, last week. Uh, I was well used to going on the radio, anything with the environment, they'd call me. So I kept pushing them into new experiences. So that was the first reason. Second reason was, um, well, there, there's about five elements to this. In 1972, the Club of Rome um, produced a report called The Limits to Growth. You had Donella. Um, Matthews, I think it was. Uh, yes. And Dennis Matthews and Jürgen Randers. I just want to get the names right to give credit to these people. Uh, it's been much criticised, but they were very accurate in many of their predictions. And they were the first report that what I became aware of anyway that pointed out the limits to the resources that are on the earth. Uh, particularly metals like zinc and cobalt. And it is still the case. You know, we're not making any more oil, we're just using it up at a rate of knots, uh, and so on. I was working in Africa at the time, uh, from 72 up to 75. The Yom Kippur War, that was the second thing that pushed me in this direction. You had the Israeli Yom Kippur War after the formation of OPEC. 
then you had the oil crisis of 73, you had another one in 79, and I began to appreciate how vulnerable this country is. If we're dependent on that long chain of delivery of oil, fossil fuels, climate change didn't come into it yet at this stage. It was just the availability of, of, of the stuff. Uh, as you get older, your hands shake. <laughs> <laughs> and hair grows out your ears, and your ears become we'll less effective. Little, we'll move on to taking short. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the third factor was a book by a man called Amory Lovins called Soft Energy Paths. Some of you may have read it. And he was advocating what was termed at the time intermediate technology. The next thing that happened to me was in 76, there was a convention held up in Glen Cree in the Wicklow Mountains of people who were pioneers in a whole lot of different alternative things, alternative medicine, food. And there was a guy there called Brian Hurley, and he had this little trickle charger, and it was generating uh, electricity. And I was amazed at this. And perhaps you'd give a round of applause to Brian, who's sitting down there, because he was very instrumental. I need to move it on. I need to move it on. That's the time. We're nearly there. Brian was working at the physics lecturer in Bolton Street at the time. And when we decided with the lads we'd enter a project, what would we do is we'd do it on wind. And the last thing was a current sore was a big issue at the time. And if you were against nuclear power, as I was at the time with Friends of the Earth, you had to offer an alternative. Uh, oddly enough, before I hand over to Declan, the last point I want to make is that I experienced a lot of ridicule at the time. It was kind of hippie energy. <laughs> and it was really downgraded, like what we needed was macho nuclear energy, big time. And this was kind of ridiculed a lot. And I, I learned later that author uh, Schopenhauer, the German philosopher, said there are three phases in the adoption of new truth or a new idea into society. First, it is ridiculed. Then, it is resisted. And finally, it's accepted. I'm sure everybody knew that all along anyway. So I'll hand you over to Declan. That's brilliant, Sean. Thank you very much. <laughs> Declan. Now, I have to say to you first, right, I, I showed a video clip of yourself and Paul to Minister Ryan uh, about five or six weeks ago, and his comment after watching it was, gold dust. You must be very proud of the work you did in that, yourself and Paul. Yeah. Tell us about some of, the, some of the issues you had in some of the... We had a lot of issues at the time. Um, generally, when we set up the windmill, uh, we had a, an engineering factory next to us in Metfab, uh, which helped us to actually build up the uh, wind, uh, windmill at the time. Um, for us, it was great excitement. As, as Sean said, you know, we were given new horizons, and we were very grateful, you know, that we got someone who had the mindset at the time. Um, we enjoyed it. We had a great time. We suffered a lot of setback at the time. For the doubters out there, we proved we were wrong. Very good. You know? Very good. Thank you, thank you very much, Declan. So, guys, great appreciation. Your, your story is, is brilliant. It's a great story of wisdom. It's a great story of energy. And it's a great story of foresight. Yeah. And we really appreciate you coming from Cork to Dublin today. So I'd like to give a small presentation uh, to both of you uh, to just to reflect that. That's you, Sean. You. And Declan. That's lovely. So, Gorham Agwiv. Gorham Agwiv. August Moel Anoga.